autism and ADHD are very common these days. No one knows why people get these conditions other than they ever get from their parents or someone else in the family tree. But there are others like me who do not not get it from the family tree and are just born with it naturally. My name is Carl Cox and we'll be taking a look at these conditions and how I can help people with these conditions. Some symptoms of ADHD are seems forgetful. For example, I have to use the script to remember all this text. I'm easily distracted, which is also quite true, or daydreaming, which I do quite on myself. If he is not to listen and has trouble following directions, which is very true sometimes as well, is prone to tantrums and meltdowns due to frustration and lack of impulse control. Struggles with organisation and completing tasks. Completing tasks, I do have struggles with. Um, I have trouble staying on tasks unless um, activity is very enjoyable. That is also very true. Struggles with social skills, struggles to sit still doing quiet activities. Yes, well, I struggle to sit still doing loud activities. I have to always be on the move. Such as meal times are doing independent work time at school. Yeah, work time, that's very true. I've moved quite a lot. Um, has trouble waiting to be impatient. It's on the go. Yeah, I'm always moving myself, always on the go. Or moving fidgeting. Yeah, I need to pick up fiddle with everything. Not everything, I fiddle with my fingers mostly. Interrupts people, blurts things that are appropriately may struggle with non verbal cues, die, acts without thinking, I may not understand consequences, don't think that describes me either. May overact to sensory input, like the things we sound, smell, taste, look, feel, place of and takes physical breaks. So that's some of the symptoms of ADHD, some which describe me a lot, some done. <clears throat> some symptoms of autism are avoids eye contact, which is I do a lot, or physical contact. Has delayed speech, which is true because it took me 10 times to do the script. Or no speech at all, or repeats phrases over and over. It's prone to meltdowns, or again on me, anxiety on me, frustration or communication difficulties. Gets upset by changes in routine. We don't like changes to it. Um, struggles with social skills, also very true. Uses excessive body movements. Yeah, I do move quite a lot. Example, walking, which I do quite a lot of flap on my hands, sometimes I do it randomly. Has obsessive interests and experiences. And experience perfection is cons constantly on the go. Again, it picks and needs to pick a fidget. Again, some of these symptoms are very similar to ADHD. So it pick up a bit of everything yet again. It's very advanced verbally, but struggles with non verbal cues. Has trouble showing an understanding of other people's feelings and his own. Reacts strongly to the way things sound, smell, or taste. So half of these are very, basically exactly the same thing as ADHD, but half of them are very different. So those are some of the symptoms of autism. Now there are, if there is no cure for ADHD, but currently there are available treatments can reduce symptoms and improve functionality. Like treatments include medication, which is what I did, um, physical therapy, education or training, or a combination of treatments. Or psychotherapy, I read that one. Which is, you know, you talk like a, you talked to a person on the chain, on the, like the classic scene you've seen movies, stuff like that. And um, uh, that's all it is for um, ADHD, but it's quite a lot for autism. Like, um, it, you, if it helps show them, like if you tell someone a story, it helps to show them a picture or a video or something like that to help tell the story. Or, um, or saying and writing things down for them. Um, it also helps if you can break down exactly like each millisecond of what you're trying to explain the story to. And uh, if you say like a phrase like it's raining cats and dogs, you, some like especially younger kids with autism, they might take it very literally. So they might wait, raining cat, cats and dogs. You have to explain to them it's just normal rain, even though they might not get it. I mean, I, I don't know if I was like as a kid. I do take things literal, but I don't know if it's like that literal. Um, and give them the opportunity to let them off by offering choices and stuff like that. I try not to I teach a bit what they might want to say about those. If, ha if they have any difficulty explaining something, repeat back to them what you have understood so they can explain the thing better. Like me, I'm struggling with this right now. <laughs> Another thing is dealing with change, right? Like again, I have a routine and usually if something changes, I go, I don't, I don't know how I react. I just sit in silence, I don't even know what's going on. My mind's like, what? What's going on? So yeah, um, it's, it's, it's best to tell someone with autism, like, ahead that something might change the routine like for example you're going out to a picnic next weekend something like that just to tell them they're not going to be sat at home doing the usual thing they're going to be out and about doing something else with the family something like that so that's what's one of the ways you can help people with autism and ADHD as you can tell I have I struggle with these conditions myself just reading this but that's the way you can best help people in these conditions